people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello, and welcome to They Think It's All Over with Gary and Rory, an England cricketing legend who admits that in 1979 he was held down, stripped naked and had his genitals covered with shaving foam by Ian Botham. So he got off lightly then. Jeff <laughs> Wilcox. <laughs> with David and Jonathan is a comedian from Alabama, a state described in its own national anthem as softer than a mother's kisses, sweeter than a mother's tongue. And if anyone would know what it's like to snog their mums, it's the kinfolk of Vic Henley. <laughs> We start the show with our excuses round, which concerns the fanciful reasons some sports people give to justify their dismal displays. Gary, Rory and Jeff, it's international cricket for you, here at England on their way to becoming officially the world's worst test team, earlier this summer at the hands of New Zealand. <coughs> we join play with England's Chris Reid at the crease. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, slow ball. He's bold Chris Reid, neck and crop. So why, according to former England coach David Lloyd, did England, and in particular their new players, do so badly this summer, Gary's team? Well, he said that many dozy things, it's difficult remembering them all. Mm -hmm. Oh, climb uh, off the fence, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's nice to have a proper cricketer on the year, because we've been used to David Gower so far. <laughs> you knew him when he was a test captain, didn't you, Jeff? I mean, we know he was good at the toss-up. In fact, a lot of people have said you are a complete... <laughs> England captain in many ways. But what's he like as a captain? Give us an, your appraisal, Jeff. You've got 20 minutes. Oh. <laughs> no, when he was batting, he was pretty good. No, he was beautiful to watch. It's just that wafting outside Jeff, of Jeff, you've been drinking. But, uh, <laughs> it was quality when he was batting, or he was infuri infuriatingly stupid. Don't try and use long words like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm with you. Me, for picking on David, because it's very unfair, especially someone who once went, as a youth, you posed for those pictures in Joy of Sex. I posed for Joy of Sex, but then in my beard they used. <laughs> <laughs> we do normally go for a drink before the show, have a yeah. few drinks, and I must say that Geoffrey Boycott is a consummate professional when it comes to that. He knew exactly when to stop drinking and leave the bar, when it was his round. <laughs> it's a bit unfair, isn't it, Jeff? Because actually, you're not, for a Yorkshireman, you're not that mean, are you? <laughs> I'm not sure I'll dance with that. That's a result then. <laughs> Did you know Gary was a bit of a cricketer, Jeff? I've seen him once. Have you? Took about three seconds to watch him get out. That's what his wife Michelle says as well. <laughs> I was leaving it! <laughs> I left it! <laughs> Sadly, we'll need the answer within uh, five days. All right. Oh. Possible. We were just warming up like my back is. <laughs> Did the enlightened New Zealand manager let his players bring their sheep with them? If we're moving into livestock, I believe I should take over. <laughs> <laughs> and a clue. Excellent. <laughs> In fact, it was all down to ba a bad atmosphere in the England changing room. David Lloyd told the Telegraph that the new players were traumatised by the dressing room atmosphere. Before the series, Lloyd was damning about the Kiwis' chances. About Nathan Astle, he said, if he's a test bowler, my backside's a fire engine. <laughs> Unfortunately, Astle took the decisive wicket of Ramprakash to win the Lord's test. But on the plus side, David Lloyd's arse did put out a tricky chip pan fight in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> David, Jonathan and Vic, it's Manchester United's number 26 for you, Massimo Taibi. And here is the Stratford End's favourite Sicilian, hilariously letting one in against Southampton. This is Letizia. Pahas goes left. Oh, it's in! It's gone straight through Taibi! It goes straight through him! For one of the goalkeeping clangers that he'll want to forget. But, of course, it wasn't his fault, so David's team, what did the Premiership's costliest keeper blame for this clangour? He cost, what, four and a half million? Something like that. Have they got the currency right? <laughs> <laughs> In the Italian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, it's everybody is a millionaire. <laughs> the Romanian version is called um, Who Wants to Own a Kettle. I don't know. <laughs> Who wants a down payment on a fleet? Small <laughs> prize, it's no less exciting. You've won filament, do you want to go for the full... <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Is he Sicilian? Did you say he's Sicilian? He's Sicilian, yeah. So he's going to wake up the next day with a horse's ass in his bed. <laughs> no, no, no. It's turning out in his head, it'll be. <laughs> Come. Yes, sir. I was just admiring your ring. Were you? I've asked you before to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> that, he's out alone now, isn't he? Is that right? I don't know. Is he? Yeah, going? he's out alone at the Mario's Pizza House nearby. <laughs> Manchester United supporter. What's what's Massimo doing at the moment then, Geoffrey? I think my mum could have stopped, stopped it with a penny better. I was amazed. <laughs> I think it's completely obvious he's trying to play his way onto the Scottish side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I actually do know the answer to this one, rather oh. remarkably. I remember reading this. He complained about his studs. Mm -hmm. He either said, I can't remember, he either said his studs on his boots were too long or not long enough. And when he went down, he, he either got too much grip or not enough grip. Are you going to let me have it or do I have to be more specific? He's correct for three points, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, as he explained to the papers, it was all down to his footwear. I slipped as I went to pick up the ball. During the week, I was asking for longer studs because the ones I have are too short. And the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> after a season of... After a season... <laughs> Drink now, please. We, we should send us some Bernard on. We won't round his neck for you. Yes, please. This is Bernard. <laughs> you spent too long with David. You're getting all posh. Plastic. Yes. It's a Bernard, please. And then a taxi to Shepherd's Buck. <laughs> After a series of early season blunders, Taibi has now learned a few simple English phrases, which puts him one up on David Beckham. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have no points, and David's team have three. In our next round, author, author, we trawl through the murky world of sports quotations. David's team, who do you suppose said this? I wasn't hurt. I was just playing. This is the first time in a hundred years, and I feel really good about it. So, is who it, was describing themselves there, do you think, David's team? Is it uh, Barbara Cartland to Cliff Richard? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Gary. It's Gary with his first header. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the answer? You I think I do. <laughs> it's, it's Lennox Lewis talking about Holyfield. Am I speaking for us all when I say it's good to see the world heavyweight champion title returning to England, to Britain, what, 102 years since we last held it? I believe it was Bob Jim Simmons. Beat Gentleman Jim Corbett. Jim Corbett in mm -hmm. Kentucky. Went the full 14 rounds. It was apparently a great match. Jeff, you were there. Was it as good as they <laughs> Brilliant. It was a good match, wasn't it? They don't make them like that anymore, do they? Yeah, it was for three points, Lennox Lewis, of course, who became undisputed heavyweight champion of the world on Saturday night. Lennox Lewis is the first British champion this century, but the most pleasing aspect of this victory is that next time, it's a bloody yank, you'll have to get up at five in the morning. <laughs> now, Gary's team, what we want to know here is not who's talking, but who's he talking about. We were all in the dressing room, expecting a roasting after the 4-2 defeat at Southampton. But when he came in, he just looked at us and, without a word, got undressed and joined us in the showers. He's been cool like that ever since. <laughs> so, this Gary Steen, uh, that this about? This must be um, Rodine Girls School First Eleven talking about Gary Glitter. <laughs> How dare you make jokes about that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard any jokes like that at all, Jonathan? <laughs> oh, if I did, I would not tell them in public. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sort of joke you wouldn't tell in public? <laughs> I'm not telling. <laughs> Come on, then, Gary's team. Although I did hear a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between Gary Glitter and Acme? <laughs> but I can't tell you the ending because it's disgusting. <laughs> I've forgotten it now. Yes. You never had well, it because you're you losing and you're, you're crying like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> How many teams of Southampton beaten 4 2 to come that many? They beat Menu 4 2, didn't they, Geoffrey? The other year, not this year. Three, What's the three, score this year? 3 3. Very good. Who scored? Taibi. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> That was funny. It's that was very funny. They didn't give you credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a question I quite like to ask you while there's a lull in the conversation, Geoffrey. <laughs> did you ever leave a really expensive hat in the commentary box one day? And when you're out, 
did somebody else put it on the floor and jump up and down it and say, that bloody pompous, arrogant, bigoted Yorkshire wanker? <laughs> but when you came back, you put it on and walked out without realising it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use the word wanker, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Only by one word, let's be fair. Did you get it straight away or did you jump and miss for a few times? <laughs> yeah, I think it speaks yeah. well of you, that you, you, because you knew about that incident and you knew David was responsible and it speaks very well of you came on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but did you know about the time he took his key down the side of your roller? <laughs> uh, well, Newcastle beat them, didn't they? 4-2. May have done. Wouldn't be rude, would it? It may well be, yeah. I'll give you three points for that. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, okay, good. Yes, the author of that was Newcastle's Kieran Dyer and he was talking about his former boss at the tune, Ruud Hullett. Hullett was involved in a scandal at Newcastle when he and Gaza both seduced the same pizza waitress and had their way. Hullett got a night of passion and Gaza got a night of pizza. <laughs> Shortly before he left Newcastle, Hullet went to the city's Catholic cathedral to find a priest who would bless St James's Park, because he was convinced the club was cursed. Yes, cursed with a useless Dutch manager. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have six. Time now to play What's Going On. We show a strange piece of sporting footage and then ask what's going on. David's team, you may or may not recognise this sport. So, David Steen, what was that all about? It's hip hop, it's hip hop quick. And yeah. it had Tommy Boy t shirts, and that's a hip hop label, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoever it is, I bet they could beat English. Ah, American, hmm. Nothing gets busted! Nothing! Who was the rapper, MCC Hammer? Who told you to say that? Talking to some teenagers outside. Again. <laughs> they used to call Jeffrey the Yorkshire rapper as well. They called the Yorkshire rapper, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he had a very good rap, Jeffrey. He was forward defensive. Forward defensive. Are you still awake? Forward defensive. <laughs> I believe his, clo his clothing style and yours are basically the equates to the style of play. Right? Very, yeah, very, very loose. Clue, yeah, yeah. Very loose, very happy. Very loose, yeah. Very tight, tight yeah. as a duck's And also. Yeah. also <laughs> Also, David's shirt's got a big edge on it there. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the crease I used to leave. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they but said Compton. They were talking about Compton. Well, they're like a, they must be a cricket team from uh, these are, these Compton, are from, from LA. Compton, from South Central. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yep, yeah, that was. Oh. Yeah. 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 You, don't know, you don't know Compton's in South Central? No, he, he you never saw Boys in the Hood? He Jeffrey thinks Boys in the Hood has something to do with wearing a parka. You know what he's <laughs> <laughs> Or he thinks people haven't been circumcised. <laughs> Why would you think of that? Because he's the knob dog master. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here yeah. every week, tell your friends. <laughs> exactly. That was indeed the Homies and Pops cricket team made up of former gang members from the notorious <laughs> Compton area of Los Angeles on a recent visit to Lords. The Compton side toured England this year and played a representative team of county cricketers. Of course, it's not easy to play cricket after years of debilitating substance abuse, but Phil Tufnell performed very well. <laughs> The Compton version of cricket is played exactly according to the traditional rules. Everyone wears white, the umpire's decision is final, and at 20 to 4, there's a crack interval. <laughs> Gary's team, we take you now to Ustort in Sweden. But what on earth is going on here? Världsmästerskapen i skägg och mustasch anordnas vartannat år de senaste gångerna i Tyskland. Arrangemanget lockar skägg och mustaschprydda män från hela världen och i år kom cirka 200 deltagare till Ystad för att tävla. 
So, any thoughts at all? Well, you, said, you said it's in um, Sweden, which is a shame because I thought it was the uh, final elim eliminator round uh, for the Miss Greece competition. <laughs> <laughs> which, of course, you won, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. It is kind of well, well known that closet homosexuals, of whom there are many, will often be and go to extraordinary lengths to cover up the fact the beard growing often being the first sign, am I right, Rory? Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Edward Stagnite? <laughs> Do you know any royals, Geoffrey? Have you hobnobbed with the royal family? Occasionally. Hey, which ones? Queen. She's the nicest. Is she? Mm. I imagine that was more the hobbing side of things. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a man you sport as well, isn't she? Coming from Hanover as she does. <laughs> it's not the first bit of Swedish film I've seen featuring a lot of hairy twats, I must say. <laughs> By the way, Rory, if I could have that back by Friday, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> My mum's coming over. <laughs> I do speak Swedish, so I can work out what it said. It is, in fact, they're mainly Germans on it, Phil, aren't they? Mm -hmm. In the moustache-growing competition <laughs> of that place. Great, <laughs> yeah. Bob, some liver glasses, Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What else could that be? The coverage of this year's Beard World Cup. There are several subcategories involved. The winner of the longest beard category was one Graham Matthews from Barnsley, who grew his beard entirely by accident. He was invited by friends to watch a Geoffrey Boycott innings from start to finish. <laughs> Amazingly, every single winner of the Beard World Cup so far has been German. This year's winner, Jürgen Buchhart, beat Brian Blessed in the semi-finals on penalties. <laughs> In 1994, the Chinese government placed an official health warning on beards because they trap chemical pollutants. And if you have a close look at Rory, they also trap sweet and sour pork, shreds of kebab, and nesting field mice. And at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. It's time now for our regulars to scrabble around in the dark as we play Field the Sportsman. It's David and Jonathan first this week. If you'd like to take your positions. You've gone down. I meant that in a sporting <laughs> sort of way. <laughs> you have 90 seconds to work out who you're manhandling. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Yes. Good luck, Jonathan. And your 90 seconds start now. Whoa! The words brick and shit house do speak the mind. Uh... Okay, there you go. Solid. Hang on. Is it the uh, slightly effeminate one from Steps? <laughs> He's got a very cold ball in his hand. I think that's a conjoined twin. Is it yeah. Chang and Eng, the famous <laughs> Siamese couple? <laughs> Lord, you up impressing the crown heads. <laughs> you know what, if I were you, I'd take that to a doctor and have a biopsy done immediately. <laughs> well, there's a nasty glitter or something, is it? Jesus, the size of it. Is it a chain of chats? Is it Gary Glitter? A <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Hang on, I'll just, just has, check. Has Gary, glitter, has Gary Glitter gone down for that, or did they, I heard they <laughs> sent him a holiday. Someone told me he'd gone to Tampa with the kids, I assume. <laughs> and sent him to Florida. <laughs> We're gonna kill. Oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> you don't mention it. I won't mention it. All right. I'm just... <laughs> if we're talking. Oh, sorry. Are we talking? Right. Oh, hang on. I'm all clear now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're talking shop putters. Uh, only shop putters do you know. It's not. Shop not Jeff Capes. Right, not old. No, no. More, Is it more, shop more, more recent. Yeah. Shop um, British world champion. What's ours called? Mark. I mean. Um, British world champion. No way. <laughs> I was called Mark, 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 um, Mark Proctor. Any good? Well done. Fair enough. 
three points. Come on. Well done. <laughs> Gary and Rory, if you'd like to go and take your positions, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, blindfolds on. Can we have our second <laughs> mystery guest, please? <laughs> Just wait a minute, hey. <laughs> well, I'm going to want to take this one. <laughs> He's a beauty, Gary. Okay. <laughs> She's gorgeous. <laughs> Go for the kiss straight away. <laughs> right, your 90 seconds start now. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Rory. Oh. Oh, it's oh. Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> Michael Portillo's campaign manager. <laughs> it's, it's, what, it's one of those um, blokes from earlier on, the Sweden, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well done. Are you saying again? <laughs> we don't want the name. Yeah, yeah. I want the name. Yeah, done. We always want the correct name, you know that. Zagmio, right. <laughs> <laughs> Zagmio. Are you English? <laughs> Is it Graham Matthews or Jürgen Buchhart? Oh my word, he's got a good memory. Three points, well done. <laughs> How sad can he be? I've written it, them down. Well, that's better. He gets it right, he turns around and goes to me. <laughs> it doesn't but I don't lose. <laughs> Nick, um, can I ask you, I know normally we try and save on the budget, but can I ask this time that we actually, you know, spend some money and get that bloke a cab home? Because I'd hate to think him outside dressed like trying to hail one down. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be there for hours. <laughs> And that means at the end of this round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have 12. <laughs> we end, as is our wont, with the name game. The winning team goes first, which means that Jonathan will be doing the clues. Very good, very good. As brave. many names as you can in the next 90 seconds, starting now. OK, here we go. Uh, new world heavyweight champion, he was Canadian, Very now serious. he's British. There you go, OK. Uh, Britain's best tennis player, was Canadian, Jim now he's British. Uh, there you go, OK. Yeah. Uh, England football manager, brought the perm to prominence. Vegan, yeah, oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is a, a wrestler, a WWF wrestler, and if you were dead, which Grave many dead. people have thought, uh, they Undertaker. would bury you. Here's the answer, kitty. Yeah. OK. Uh, world number one tennis player, she's much more feminine than most of them. Hingis. Swiss Miss. You, you, go, you got it. OK, this bloke is, uh, is a golfer. His nickname is Wild Thing. Uh, he, you know the mind. Yeah, John there you go, Daly. John Daly. OK, baseball, New York baseball player. His second name is a straw, a summer fruit. Strawberry. I said Joe strawberry. strawberry. A little bit, but you didn't hear Joe that. OK, <laughs> German motor racing driver. His name is Cobblers. Translates, make shoes. There you Which go. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> this guy, Australian rugby league player, sponsored by cat food. Um, I have been accused of putting it on my knob. Whiskers, 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 okay. Oh my sweet Jesus. Um, come on, come on. He's a footballer, he's a footballer. If you did a puo, you would be doing a. If you needed to take a crapo, you would be doing a. No, a little. It would be a little whoopsie daisy o. No, what are you treading? The dog does a little. It's a dog. Doo -doo, dog doo -doo. No, not doo doo. I'll give you doo doo in a minute. It's like a. It rhymes with curd. Turn. And if it was a poo it would be a... Turtle. Yeah, the first name's something else. Ricardo, Ricardo, Turtle. He's one of the Nintendo just brothers. His brother's Luigi. Mario. There you go. Oh, we got Mario Turtle. Oh. 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 It's a new man. Yeah. 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 My man, yeah. well. that was the best. <laughs> try, try to make it as easy as possible for you this week. So, despite playing off the ladies' tee, you've only got another ten there. So you've moved on to twenty-two, which means don't belittle his efforts. All oh, right then. Well, I think you I did, did very well. Fourteen will do it for you. You pass those along, Rory. Shut up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> you bought your retarded half brother in again, Rory. <laughs> now he's the retarded half brother. <laughs> That's the smart one. I apologise. <laughs> okay. 90 seconds, starting now. Ginger, scored recently, but not with Paul Chris Scholes. Evans. Correct. Um, bigoted, bigoted oh, Yorkshire um, cricketer. Jeff Boycott. No. <laughs> Fred Trin. Let's see what you thought of that, yeah. Um, oh, dear, I don't know who this is. Uh, he's a footballer, and his second name is an American toilet. And John. His, and his first name is the back of a ship. 
Stern, Stern Very John. good indeed. The fluffiest, cuddliest, best bowler we've ever had in this... A uh, batter, sorry, batsman. <laughs> batsman. <laughs> Just boycott. I saw you bat, I thought you were a bowler. Um, <laughs> first name. First name, same as Beardsley. Peter. Second name, how long it took Jeffrey to score a run? Oh, all, all day. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> First name, uh, same as, um, same as uh, Rosenthal. Jim. And where are you from, Geoffrey? Yorkshire. N yeah, Wakefield. Uh, it's a country where Geoffrey could easily come from. It's uh, <laughs> sec the second syllable is a, a country, a, a yeah. land. land. And the first is a, something you, a hole that you, with a drill, you and Geoffrey can do it for England. <laughs> Paul. Paul, yeah. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he said that, not me. Um, you let him on. Last name, <laughs> what's the, you know, Try the French what do women wear, Geoffrey? Bras. Bras, Bras yeah. Well, what's one of them called? One bra. <laughs> <laughs> one bra. One bra, yes. One bra. So, Gary's team had 15 points, but this week's winners with 22 are David's team. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> so, our thanks to Gary, Rory and Jeffrey, David, Jonathan and Vic. We're all off to Euro 2000, except for viewers in Scotland who can see a repeat of Hamish Macbeth. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Out of focus everywhere next on BBC One, the beers talking in Gary's video diary, men behaving badly.